Yo, what's going on everyone? Brian and Jim here with Drink a Beer and Play a Game, and here we are at the last South Park game. Today we're checking out South Park Stick of Truth. I can't wait! Yeah, let's be honest, this is the review we're all waiting for. Released in 2014, this was developed by Obsidian Entertainment and partnered with South Park Digital Studios. It was originally going to be published by THQ, but then that went bankrupt. So, the rights were bought by Ubisoft and they wound up publishing it. Thank God! Yes, thank God indeed. It was released for Windows, the PlayStation 3, and the Xbox 360. And it is a hell of a game. Let's just get into it. Graphically, there's not a lot to complain about here. You get to finally, truly, fully experience the world of South Park. And modern South Park with all the added shit to it. There's just no, I guess to say, stone left unturned. There's so much detail put into this game. You can tell that just besides the South Park game, it was made by people who love the franchise. Everything, even every little collectible, has some kind of throwback to the series or just makes perfect sense. And besides that, you get to see more of the world than you ever got to see before. Like, say, the back of Tweak's coffee shop, for instance. Who gave a shit about that before? No one. It's just little things like that. Tops of garages have stuff. Collectibles everywhere. The graphics perfectly, once again, do South Park well but it's just bigger this time than the download-only releases. If I had one tiny, minute nitpick, it would be sometimes the frame rate drops a little, or it might seem like it's stuttering when you're just moving around. But besides that, it's a damn near perfect package. Bri gave it a 10, I gave it a 9. What the hell else can I say? You don't even need a beer, it's just great. The sound. Holy crap, there is a lot of dialogue in this game. And it's funny. It's like playing through an actual episode or movie of South Park. There's so many different sayings, too. You're not hearing the same shit over and over again. There's a buddy system where you're paired with someone different, and you have so many different buddies and so many different dialogue options. Well, not so much dialogue options, but there's so many different cutscenes built into the game's engine that it'll just seamlessly go into a cutscene for like five minutes of hilarious dialogue, and then you go back and forth. The music, it's, what can I say, it's basically Skyrim. It's big, it's orchestral, it's really booming with a huge wall of sound around you. The sound effects, the sound effects are fine, they fit the game well, they sound like they're just straight out of South Park. Unfortunately, I guess because of the orchestral nature and how it's mainly a lot of ambient noise, and how every once in a while some things can get a little repeated after a while, even with all the different buddies, we couldn't give it perfect scores. But we gave it eights. We had to be fair, but this is another excellent package. And as far as beer goes, I'll just add one beer for... Hell, I love Skyrim. I love Skyrim sound, and I love the sound here. So when you talk about the control, you gotta keep in mind, this is an RPG with turn-based attacks. So once you enter into a fight with a group of enemies, really, it's just 90% of the time you select an attack, and it automatically does it. But in some cases, it's going to be a timing-based quick time event, or it's just going to be a rotation of your joystick and then a button. It's, it's just a timing-based RPG. It's something that most people are used to at this point. There was no issue with it. I can't say I ever really experienced a delay in the timing of the buttons. If I ever messed up, I knew it was because of me, and it was probably because I was drinking too much beer. So as you see, we both gave it 10s. Not going to add a beer because it's perfect to us. The gameplay. Well, I just kind of touched on some of the main points in the control. But like I said, this is an RPG through and through. And what we love so goddamn much is that South Park did an RPG that's done so goddamn well. There is so much attention to detail from the customizations of your characters to their power-ups to the perks to each weapon you can attach a badge and it can become electrified or it can become gross. There's just nothing left unthought about. The side quests, they all feel unique. Yes, at the end of the day, like every other RPG, most of your missions and side quests are go to this location, fight these things, or go pick up this item and bring it back. But this one, it just never feels repetitive. And maybe because you do have such a better personal connection with all the characters you're interacting with, and you have so much humor thrown in there. You're not going to get tired of playing this game. So the only real knock we had against this game 
is that as you go through and power up your guy and you have your powerful buddies and the summon calls, it is a little easy. I'm not going to lie. In the beginning, you're fighting some foes and you might be like, oh shit, I might actually die. But towards the end, if you have all your power-ups done right, you're not going to worry about fighting pretty much anything. Although I didn't mind it that much, I know me and Jim both agreed the game probably could have been just a little bit harder. And not to mention, the game probably could have been a little bit longer. I think my average time I beat it three times already was about 10 hours, and that was with doing every side quest and getting most of the collectible. We love the world so much, we just wish there was a little more of it. With that being said, we both gave it nines. Other than our minor complaints, there's nothing to really hate here. And I'm going to add two beers, one for me and one for Jim, just for finding fault in such a fun goddamn game. We're assholes! The originality. You know, we probably gave the score maybe a little bit higher number than it actually deserves, but there just seems something so unique about the overall package here. For one, going back to a turn-based RPG kind of style is really unique for this day and age. And a lot of companies are scared to do it, but it works so well here. The whole Facebook thing that's in the game. Needing to build up friends outside of just, you know, allies or this or that. Kind of normal kid-based interaction based on goals and quests. Kind of original. It just throws together a lot of stuff from a lot of games together and it just makes it work as a package. And let's not forget, you can make your own ammo by shitting in a toilet. Jim, what about the summon power of having Mr. Slave suck someone up his ass? Yeah. You never saw that before. Yeah, can't say I see that in too many games. I'll give you that one. So we both gave it nines. And if I had to add a beer, I'll maybe add one for Mr. Slave and his sweet, hard, greasy body. Get out! Oh, yeah, yeah, the character summons. Yeah, character summons. The replayability, this is another area, me and Jim. We probably gave it higher scores than it truly deserves, but here's our reasoning. I, as I mentioned, I personally have gone through this game three times, and I'll tell you right now what brought me back every single time is the sheer amount of fun you have experiencing South Park. Going into people's homes, going through the main character's closets, and seeing all the little throwbacks to the game. Going in homes like this, and... Catching a guy jerking off under a blanket, or a couple having sex. It's funny little moments like this that really make you want to go out and explore every single inch of South Park. Aside from that, you do have four main classes, and each one does play... I don't want to say completely differently, but they all have enough unique powers that the experience does feel a little different. But like most turn-based games, at the end of the day, you're just using whatever is the strongest weapon you have, and you might throw your power in there once in a while. Although it's not perfect as far as replayability, and the ending always stays the same, there is a reason to at least go back, play through it four times. So when you look at our scores, I gave it an 8, Jim gave it a 7. I'm only going to add one beer, because kind of going back to what I said about gameplay... It would have just been nice if the game went on a little longer. I just want to play so much more of this. Any more South Park? Where's the goddamn sequel? I think it's coming out this year. I win it now! So overall, this is a game we friggin' love, and we cannot stress that enough. I, once again, did a few marathon runs over a weekend, and I think both weekend nights, I stayed up till almost 5 in the morning playing this game, because I just could not put it down. There's not enough good things we can say about it. Just go out and pick yourself up a goddamn copy, especially if you're a South Park fan. As you see from our scores, I gave it a 10, Jim gave it a 9. There's nothing to hate here. When we combined our scores together, it rounds out to an 8.9, which we think is fair. Let's face it, most games out there, if you look at the criteria and the way we score games, almost nothing is going to get a perfect 10 from us, but this game will come as close as any other. When it comes to the beer pairing, we wanted to go with something a little stronger and a little more special. So we had to choose the Chimay Grand Reserve. This is a strong dark Belgian coming in at 9%. There is an ass ton of flavor and honestly, if you're like me, you're going to sit down and enjoy the shells game and not want to put it away. So you probably only need two or three bottles to get yourself through one of these marathon runs and enjoy the hell out of this game. Don't forget to drink your beers and play your games responsibly, guys. 
As always guys, thanks for checking out this video, and if you enjoyed it, make sure you give us a thumbs up, leave some comments, or better yet, why not subscribe? Till next time guys, cheers.